Hi everyone and welcome back to another Wickedly Weird Wednesday. I have not filmed one of these videos for the longest time and I'm just so excited to read some new ghost stories. I haven't actually even been on this Reddit page since the last time I filmed my last video. So hopefully we've got some good stories to get into. So with that being said, if you enjoy videos like this, please leave a like because it really, really does help me out. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. But without further ado, let's get straight on into it. This first story is called Another Paranormal Experience. Today, I call this apartment the living hell. So let's go back to 2017 when I just moved into this small cozy apartment with my family. My first day and night in this place was actually pretty good. The only one time I was feeling safe here. So let's move on to the second day, specifically the second night. It was exactly 12.05 a.m. when I smelled a fire smell. Oh my God, my worst nightmare. My window was open so I thought someone was smoking. I closed it and kept smelling it for five minutes or so. So the time is now 10 past 12 a.m. Keep the hour in your head. I went to sleep an hour later and got woken up at 2 a.m. because of a noise in my room near my bed. The first night I thought it was the neighbours until I heard the footsteps. You can tell when the footsteps are from above you or in your room and those were definitely next to me. I was feeling insecure and I kept hearing noises. Every single night till we left, I'd hear noises, always from 2 a.m. to 3 or 4 a.m. But I would also smell fire every single day. Remember the time? 12.05 every night up until 10 past 12. It was never earlier and never later. It was at the end of my bed, but I was not the only one in my apartment. Every night, no matter who got up, to go use the bathroom, you could always smell something. Starting in the kitchen and going through the corridor and stop exactly at my door. My whole family could smell something that smelled like rotten meat. It would sometimes smell in the day, but mostly in the middle of the night. The smell makes us feel nauseous. We tried to call someone to see if there was an explanation, but no one could give us a reason for the smell. I started to feel sick because I couldn't sleep at night. I ended up asking my friend to come and sleep at my place. She's also a paranormal believer and she was scared shitless that night. I first asked her because I thought nothing would happen if she was here, but I was wrong. We were watching a funny movie when we started hearing the noises. At least I knew I was not going crazy. We tried to think about something else, but we soon had a big jump scare. It was 2.15 a.m. and we heard a massive noise in my room. I turned on the light very quickly to see my heavy jewellery box on the floor. There was no reason for it to fall like this because it was very heavy. My friend was trembling in fear, so we decided to put headphones on and watch another movie. She fell asleep at 4 a.m. and I stayed awake talking to my friend Lucas up until 7 a.m. because I was too scared. We moved maybe a week later. When I moved in my actual house, I did some research. I typed my last address and found an article about this place and I was in shock. A couple of years before we moved into this place, there was a fire and a young woman who was only 23 unfortunately passed away in the apartment. The kitchen caught on fire and she couldn't escape. Suddenly it all made sense. The fire smell in my room and the nauseous smell in the kitchen. I always say since if someone paid me a million dollars to sleep one more night in that apartment, I'd say no. Since we left, two families have moved into that place and left a couple months later. Oh my God. I've never understood why like, so that woman died in the fire and if she is in the apartment, how on earth do they get the smell of the fire? Like I, no. And also by the way, waking up to the smell of fire is literally my actual worst nightmare because the sheer panic you would feel in that moment. Oh, I can't even imagine. That is so freaky. This next story is called just one of my many experiences I've had with the paranormal. So what I'm about to say may sound crazy. 
but I would like to know if anyone has had a similar experience or if anyone knows what this could be. My experience happened on September 11, 2018, between half past two and 3 a.m. The reason I remember the exact date and time frame is because it involves my dad who passed away a few hours later. Oh my God. My mother and I were taking care of my dad. He was on hospice after battling cancer for nearly a year. The nurses had been preparing us for about a week when he started hallucinating and then it progressed to where he couldn't speak or move. He was communicating with us by blinking. Anyway, between half past two and 3 a.m., I get up to walk across the hall to the bathroom and I happen to look down the hallway into his room. His hospital bed was in clear view. I saw someone or something bent over his bed. I didn't see any features, just a black mass that I initially thought was a person. My first thought was that it was my mom, but when I called out to her, she was in the living room. I went to the living room to find her sitting on the couch. She had on pink sleeping shorts and a white shirt, so nothing that would have been mistaken for dark clothing. I remember her saying something to me, but I'm not sure what it was because I started screaming that someone was in the room with my dad and I was so freaked out by it. I finally calmed down and kept a close eye on him the rest of the night. At 7.55am, just a few hours later, his nurse pronounced him dead. We actually called her around 6am when we noticed that his breathing began to slow down, but it took her a while to actually get to the house. The thing, whatever it was, leaning over his bed still scares me because the room he was in always had a negative feeling for me and my brother. Even long before our dad passed, we've always felt there was something in the room watching us. And on several occasions, we both saw a shadow under the bedroom door. Like someone was standing on the other side. As it turns out, our mom had also witnessed things involving that room that freaked her out. The only reason my dad's hospice bed was in that particular room was because it was the only room big enough for all of his hospice equipment. Bed lift to get him out of bed, wheelchair, oxygen machine, etc. That room still gives me a bad feeling and after witnessing that I started talking to my mom about it and we realised that before and after that anyone that stayed in that room for extended periods of time would have changes in their personalities. They would become withdrawn, angry and aggressive. They'd go back to being themselves the longer they were away from that room. I've witnessed several family members pass away over the years, but I've never had an experience like this. It still freaks me out and I have no idea what that could have been leaning over his bed. What the hell? First of all, I just quickly want to say, I am so, so, so sorry for your loss. That is actually so heartbreaking. Um, but I don't even know what I would do if I saw something leaning over someone's bed. And, you know, your mind always goes to, oh, no, it's so-and-so. Like, in this instance, it's my mom. And then she's just in the front room. Oh, my God. I Would you run back in the room? Because I don't know if I'd be able to. I don't know, oh my, that is honestly the freakiest, scary, I've actually got like goosebumps, no, 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 I don't know what I would even do in that situation, oh my god, got the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> so this next story is called The Secret of the Ancient Bungalow. The bungalow sits deep in a secluded alley in Singapore with mottled exterior walls and ivy crawling through the gloomy breath or breathe, I'm not really sure what that says. Legend has it, the owner of this bungalow was a wealthy businessman and collector who collected countless precious antiques and artworks over the years. But since his bizarre disappearance, the bungalow has been empty and has become a haunted house in the eyes of the locals. A young man full of curiosity about mysterious events accidentally heard of the legend of this bungalow and decided to go in and find out. He took a flashlight and carefully pushed open the rusty door. A damp, musty smell came over his face and the old furniture was covered with a thick layer of dust. In the study on the second floor, the man found a diary. The owner of the diary is the former owner of the bungalow. 
the diary records an unknown experience of the collector. He once bought an antique vase at an auction, which is said to contain an ancient curse. From the moment he got the vase, he began to have nightmares about being chased by strange creatures. As the man read deeper and deeper into the diary, he found that the last pages of the diary were filled with strange symbols and spells. Just then, he heard a strange noise coming from downstairs as if something was moving. The man's heart started pounding. He quickly hid the diary and tiptoed downstairs. When he came to the living room, he found that the antique vase in the middle of the room was missing. Instead, a huge black vortex came from which a bleak breath came. The man was so scared that he turned around and ran. However, no matter how he ran, he could not escape the bungalow. Just as the man was desperate, he suddenly remembered the mantra recorded in his diary. He uttered the spell and the scene in the room changed in an instant. The black vortex disappeared and the antique vase returned to its original position. The man took a breath in a sigh of relief and he finally escaped from this terrible place. When he came out of the bungalow and looked back, he found that the bungalow had disappeared and was replaced with a thick jungle. The man knew what a terrible adventure he had gone through. I have always been told this story since I was young and just had to share it with you. Oh my god, that is so scary. I wonder if that's like I might have to look into this. I wonder if that's like a legend or like it's like a story that you've been told like since young, you know, like when kids are told like scary stories and stuff. I don't know. Oh my God, that is so scary though. What on earth? The thing that would freak me out, I couldn't imagine going like through like a haunted house or like just an abandoned house and it's only you in there and you hear footsteps from downstairs First of all, the panic that would go through my whole body because how the hell do you get out of there? That is what scares me. I would never go to like a haunted or abandoned place on my own. I would have to go with other people. But that is such a scary story. Oh my God. Okay, so I'm going to read one last story for you all. And this one is called, Is My Ex-Boyfriend a Demon? So, my ex-boyfriend and I were together for a little over a year before I broke up with him. And to say the least, it was very toxic. I'm not going to go in depth about what happened in our relationship, but it was extremely toxic. The story will be a lot to read, so get comfy and grab a snack. Anyway, I've been on the depot or depot shop, a birth control shop, for nine months before I met my ex-boyfriend. I didn't have a regular period for that time. I would spot here and there, but nothing bad. I met, we'll call him Jake, and immediately fell in love with him. I ignored every red flag and there were a lot. A few hours after meeting him, I started having a very heavy flow, which wasn't normal for me. I decided to brush it off and I didn't think anything of it. A few weeks went by and I was still having this irregular flow. I didn't want to go to the doctor because I didn't have health insurance due to how expensive it is now, but I did go for birth control. About a month goes by, I started having terrible acne and couldn't find a way to get rid of it. I tried everything in the book. So basically, my body was rejecting him from the start and I had no idea. About a month and a half after I broke up with him, I went to another town to party with some of my old friends. I ended up getting pretty drunk, having a blast, and I got super tired. We were all at a beautiful two-story house about 200 years old on this big piece of property about 20 minutes from the nearest main road. I told my friends that I'm going to take a 30-minute nap downstairs and that I will be right back. I was told not to sleep downstairs because it creeps everyone out. Now this house always gives me bad vibes, like there is something wrong with the house, like something bad was in it. I was pretty drunk and I wanted to just go to bed, so I went downstairs. I laid in the bed on my left side and I rolled over to my right side to grab the blanket. 
as I'm doing this, I'm in a weird trans light state. I don't really know how to describe what happened next, so please bear with me. I fully roll onto my left side with the blanket in my right hand, tucked under my chin with the top of the blanket halfway down my arm. I felt someone spooning me, but it was hot, not warm, hot. I slowly look over my right shoulder and I see Jake's face and body turn into a demon looking thing. While this was happening, I couldn't move. I could only move my eyes and I saw the light turn on and I heard pots banging together. It was my friends trying to wake me up. I can see the room clearly and all of my friends moving and talking. Jake's eyes remained the same as if he was his normal self and I can see them out of the corner of my eye. He tilts his head up and he looks at me with a stare that I will never forget. He took his hand and grabbed my shoulder. I saw his hand and his yellow broken nails. Keep in mind, he was all red and bloody. I could see every little detail. Everything went black and I woke up in a pool of sweat and my friends was asking me if I was okay. I got up, drove home and never looked at that house again. I will say that I haven't told anyone because I'm terrified. I haven't been the same since. I don't have any more feelings for this man at all. About a week after this happened, my bleeding stopped and I haven't bled since. It's been about two months since this has happened and I still think about it to this day. I can't forget about it and I do believe in God. Anything helps, thanks for reading. Thank you all for sharing your thoughts and feelings. I have come to the conclusion that I think there was most definitely something evil in that house and it took advantage of me being very intoxicated and used my own fears against me. Oh my God, can you even imagine? Oh my God, no. First of all, I can't imagine being asleep and then just feeling someone's body behind me. But then to feel someone's body behind me and it just be so hot. Like, like I'm guessing from what she's saying that it was like a not a normal body temperature hot. Like, oh, and then, oh my God, to turn around and see someone's actual face. And then them just turn into this like demonic looking thing, all covered in blood. Oh my God. I won't be able to sleep on my own from then onwards. I would literally have to have someone be with me. I'm not going to sleep. Oh my God, that is so scary. I am so sorry you went through that. Oh, heebie-jeebies. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I'm going to end it there because I feel like that's a super freaky story to end it on. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please leave a like because it really, really does help me out. Let me know in the comments if you have any scary ghost stories yourself you can send them me on instagram or leave them in the comments or uh send them me on twitter or x but i'm not gonna lie i don't really use that up <laughs> um but yeah that's just a few ways you can get them to me you can do them in a voice note um you can write it out in like story form i don't mind um but yeah please let me know your stories because i love hearing ghost stories and yeah, if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss when I post wickedly weird Wednesday videos, obviously every Wednesday, but just when I post normal videos in general every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday. And with all that being said, thank you guys so much for listening to all these stories and spending some time with me today. I really, really do appreciate it. I hope you have a lovely rest of your day and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.